There are some people in this world that th there's a lot of people in our world that make our lives better. A lot of people. And there are some people who on a large scale make our world better. Um, and that's what today is about. Um, in the sprint car world, Wade Onger, mm -hmm. the announcer, makes everybody in the sprint car world better. Don't, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Between his, uh, his podcast, his, his writing on social media, his announcing, and his presence. His presence. Yeah. It's, I think that's what I think you nailed what I'm trying to say is that we're just it's just every time you read something, see something or with him yeah. or at a track where he's announcing the world is better. Yeah, I, I wanted to compliment his podcast, but then I thought about how much I want to compliment his writing because his writing is incredible. That Sheldon and then his announcing. <laughs> yeah, that I didn't Sheldon really know where to start. That Sheldon write up yeah. he did for the or not Sheldon Jack write up he did yeah. for the national. Well, and then the one he did about Brian Clausen for the BC 39. Oh, my this gosh. Week. That yeah, one you're right. was like, oh, gosh. Oof. And yet, this week, well, we're going to talk to him and about this. And his moonshine. And his moonshine. He's not <laughs> bad, not not bad for his moonshine that. either. Let's not forget that either. He did story time with Jack Hewitt. Uh, I cannot wait to hear more about that. It's just like I, like I see the video before I hit play, and Jack Hewitt's on there, and I'm giggling. <laughs> Before and then and Jack giggling, starts to talk. Then it. Jack starts to talk, and then I'm giggling more. And then we get to the punchline, and it's like, I mean, <laughs> I mean. So yeah, that's it. She's Aaron Evernham. I'm Steve Post. This is Wing Nation, uh, our podcast presented by Dryden and DRF Racing Oil. And we're going to talk to Wade Onger. I mean, we I don't know that we've ever had him on a dial up show. I mean, I we're, we're going to zoom it. with him, I think. But we've had him on stage with us out in Knoxville. Yep. And it just struck me this week when I heard him call in the All Star Race, like. He's still in this country. We don't have to wake him up at 3 a.m. to get him on. We can get him up on a normal time. And so uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to our Fred, friend Wade here on the program. And speaking of him, this past weekend he hung out with Blake Anderson with the mm -hmm. Flow Racing All-Star Circuit of Champions. They were racing at I-96 Speedway in Michigan. And uh, must be Blake gave him the microphone. Because when Corey Elias and Ian Madsen and Tyler Courtney got after each other for the race win, it was Wade Onger with the call on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. Watching Eliason up on the lap car again, and now comes Tyler Courtney. Tyler closing in as well. We got a three way battle, and Eliason is your leader. That death defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. For decades, Drydean Lubricants has been made in America and made to last, paving the way on our highways, in our fields, and on the production line. Today, Drydean offers a complete line of engine oils, greases, hydraulic and transmission fluids, and diesel exhaust fluid. If you want greater performance and protection for your critical engines and equipment, Go to Drydean.com. Drydean, American owned and operated and a proud supporter of racing and race fans everywhere. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Dryden and DRF Racing Oils. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline via Zoom call. Joining us is uh, our good buddy, Wade Onger. Hello, Wade. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Thank you very much, Postman. Thank you, Aaron. And I do love me a good sage apple. Oh, my God, they are the best. Hello to Chuck Sinks. I hope he's recovering well, and what a great product. I know. How about that? There, I mean, it's just an apple is an apple, is what I kind of figured until they true. delivered mm -hmm. a box of apples here to MRN, and everyone was standing around a break room going, I didn't realize apples were supposed to be this good. Yeah. I mean, we all like I'm an apple person, but it's and unreal. the cherries. So. The cherries. Oh, the Woo. cherries. Have you had the cherries, Wade? Ah, uh, yes, I have. Up until now, the only apple I have on my desk has been a MacBook, but i got to say, when Sage are involved, <laughs> i got to have their apple. There you go. Good stuff, good stuff. So, um, 
let, let's, I don't even know where to begin with you other than <laughs> you had told a bunch of us at Knoxville that you were maybe leaving as soon as Tuesday after the Nationals. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen because I think you're in Indianapolis as we're chatting with you here. So what is, uh, how, how long are you around? What's the, what's the travel situation? So I got to Sunday. Typically me, I left it to the last minute. Aaron knows what I'm like with that stuff. And, you know, you're just mentally exhausted after nationals. Like you just can't even put one foot in front of the other, let alone make a conscious decision about international air travel. And um, we looked at the options with my travel agent and Boone came up as a possible option to go to the Boone Super, uh, Super Nationals. And suddenly I thought, wow, my friends in Australia said, don't come home, Wade. The, the, the COVID stuff is a disaster. You'll be locked down for at least a month. Don't come home. And I was like, hmm, weighing it up. Do I go to Boone and do some moonshine stuff? Do I maybe go to the BC race? Or do I go home and lock down for a month? Hmm, do I go meet Jack Hewitt or to go home for a month? Screw it, I'm not going. Now that was the easy bit, making the decision. But then the harder bit was that I had to forfeit my flight back home, COVID 11 back to Perth. Uh, so that was the only flight I could get. And um, I took the gamble and I bought it. Wow, that's craziness. Crazy, crazy. Mm. I want to talk fun stuff. Let's go back to the Knoxville Nationals. Um, At Knoxville, I saw you here, there, and everywhere. Heard you on the mic, saw you on social media. Just talk about your week. I I mean, you mentioned you're tired enough you can't put one foot in front of the other. Talk about the craziness that is Knoxville. Isn't it just, you know, I don't think it even matters what happens on the track at that point, does it? Mm -mm. It's just an event. It It is just Christmas with everybody's favorite drunk uncle. You know what I mean? Where you just never know what's going to happen, but you're pretty sure you're going to like it. Um, So I started coming to the Nationals in 2015 in any sort of official capacity, thanks to Brian Stickle and Brandon Bingham. They said, hey, we need to bring this crazy guy from Australia and have him do what he does here. And then God love her, Kendra Jacobs, who I've known since she was, you know, since 94, when her dad won the historical big one. She'd like to just continue the tradition of letting me just go crazy. It's like literally the lunatics running the asylum. Uh, and let me have fun. And that's my, my role, Aaron, has been just to be the guy that makes people smile and I think look at things from an outsider's point of view. That's been my role. So um, there's no rules, there's no limit, although Kendra, God bless her, I go to her and say, what about this? And she goes, oh, God. All right, just do it. <laughs> I've had those moments with Kendra too. Yeah. <laughs> she is the best. She is the absolute yes. best. I, lo- I love her to death. I really do. In and amongst having all of the fun that you get to have, that we get to have with your calls, with your, with your, with your antics there. Uh, we have a moment where a guy by the name of Jack Hodenshield is running his oh. last Knoxville Nationals, and you get to have a lot of fun, but then you find yourself right in the middle of an absolutely amazing, poignant moment like that. I mean, that, that has got to be racetrack announcer dream situation. Oh. Oh, I'm a huge Jack fan, like we all are, Posty. So you're exactly right. And i got to credit Blake Anderson. Um, Blake went to that Field of Dreams um, reunion game. He was telling me on Thursday of Nationals, I just went and there was not a dry eye in the place. And Kevin Costner just walked out of the corn and everyone just went, I'm getting goosebumps even talking about it. And um, he said, is this heaven? And I just thought about it. Then I thought I wanted to send Jack out in some way. I was never going to let him not leave with some kind of, you know, adios from the fans. I thought, that's it. That's the key to it. Is this heaven? No, this is Iowa. And then bring the man out of the cornfield as much as I could with no cornfield in the middle, but just bring him out of the darkness onto that main stretch. And I didn't want to do it in victory lane. Steve, I wanted to do it on track. I wanted people to, and I didn't have to say anything. I knew they'd recognize that yellow race suit and that saunter, the way he just sort of lopes along. I knew it was just going to be perfect. And, and that's because I know American fans and I know how much people love Jack. It still makes, still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I was actually sitting up in the suites with Zan and some other oh. Hodenshield family, and there was certainly not a dry eye. I think everyone loved that moment. Wait, along with your theme of Is This Heaven, you also used something like that in the driver's meeting when you got to mm. speak to all the, well, 20 starters because we didn't know the final four. What was that moment f- like for you? I know listening to you and being in, in that driver's meeting was very special, but what was that like for you to get to speak to those drivers at such a significant moment? That's a privilege, Aaron. 
uh, I, I'm so indebted to Kendra for even thinking to use me in that moment. When you think about some of the luminaries of this sport that have had that moment to speak to them. And, you know, the strange part is that I, I kept trying to write something down. I thought, come on, you've got to sit down and write something down here, dude. And then I thought, no, screw it. I just want to look at these people sitting there and go, oh, no, I'll just know. When I sit there and I see Donnie in his cool looking boots, and I see Logan Schuhart's family off to the side. And I see Gio sitting there, all of 19 years of age. And I see my buddy, Brooke Tatnall. And I see James McFadden. And I knew it would just come. And, um, you know, you don't want to screw it up by all means. But I just went with what was in my heart, Aaron. And I think with, with the COVID stuff in the last 18 months, the most important thing we can all do is trying to get back to some kind of normal. And there for once, we normally look for extraordinary from those guys, but we, what we wanted and what we needed was them to give us back our normal. And that was a recurring theme in my mind. Hmm. And they did. Boy, they did. That's for sure. They, which they, they always do. Um, really, really fun. Hey, I, I want to get into the present and what you're working on. Uh, you, you, you've been awful busy since Knoxville, but I, I actually want to go way back, Wade. Your passion for sprint cars mm -hmm. and then getting tied into the United States. Where all did this start for you? Ah, uh, wow. Well, my first trip to Knoxville was in 1992. Aaron wasn't even born then, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish. And I went to Knoxville and sat in the, and actually got to announce a race with Jack Herway, um, an outlaw heat race. And I just fell in love with pe the people. And I remember this old man telling me in the parking lot at Hales Corners, Wisconsin, it rained out both nights. And he said, I said, we, we're going to Eldora. Is it really that fast? And he goes, hail, man. When you get down into turn number three, you better know what you're going to do because you're already there. And I was like, <laughs> wow. You know, like, what a way to describe the speed of that place. And I just fell in love with the purity of American race fans. In that, in that moment, the way he spoke to me, he just, there's this magic in his eyes. It's just this old guy in a parking lot in Wisconsin while we watched it rain. And that is what's captivated me about this country is, you know, I stand there, I get tears in my eyes listening to your anthem and it's not even my anthem. You know, a lady gallops by on a horse with an American flag and fireworks and a guy plays a harmonica. I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Your pride in country and your patriotism and your pure love of who you are as a nation inspires me. The sprint car racing is just a bonus. Ah, that is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a moment wait how neat has it been for you to to bring the australian culture a bit here and and vice versa to bring some of what we do our traditions maybe just in sprint car racing back to australia well aaron you know very well how much aussies love sprint car racing and, and you know how much people you know embraced you when you drove for the east Ham team the v88 team you know down at warrnambool um there was just this incredible bond between our countries and, mm -hmm. and i think as much as i hate saying it started with crocodile dundee uh of, cra of crazy enough you know I, I was in an elevator once with a guy from alabama and I, I said you and i got something in common mate we both got screwed by hollywood because forrest gump and crocodile dundee both set the tone for where we're known for where we're from <laughs> but australians have this fascination with america and americans have this beautiful fascination right back and I remember sitting in the stands in 95 with 28 Australians on a tour that I took over there. And this farmer sat behind us in the back street, uh, back stretch bleachers and said, where are you guys staying tonight? And I said, we're staying in Des Moines. It was as close as we can get. And he said to me, you can come and stay at our house tonight at our farm. I said, mate, there's 28 of us. He says, we'll be right. Like that encapsulates for me. He knew nothing more than the fact that we were from Australia. And the strangest part is yesterday I met with the legendary Ray Godsey. He walked into CJ Rayburn's shop back in the late 70s and there were three Australians talking to CJ Rayburn and CJ was chewing them a new butt about something. And Ray walked up to them and said, I've got a house 65 miles from here. If you want to stay with me, you're welcome. He didn't even know where Australia was. And they stayed with him. And as a result, Ray raced in Australia the next year. So that is the magic of our country's bond, Aaron. That is absolutely amazing. It really is. And you hear those, those, those stories, how something, mm -hmm. something really develops out of it and, and goes from there. So you mentioned yesterday you were, uh, yesterday you were with Ray Godsey. Um, 
I understand you hung out a little bit this week with uh, Jack Hewitt as well. Oh, I love my life, Poster. Yeah, I love your life too. I was, I saw a little bit. You teased a little bit of the Jack stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be epic right here. And uh, the little teaser was, but what, what are you working on with Jack? Well, I just wanted to. Um, we did the Facebook live thing with him to start with, which terrified me because literally, it's like <laughs> working with that. Terrify you. It? Oh, he, and you know what he said to me before? He goes, don't ask me anything you don't want the answer to. Yeah. And I was like, I, I know, Jack. I know how this rolls. And he somehow managed to work a few things in that I didn't ask. But but I was talking to my friend Tim Fazing and I said, you know that that iconic waterfall picture with all the cars on the waterfall that I think appeared in that, in 91 it was, in Open Wheel magazine. And Tim said to me, that place is only three miles from where he lives. I said, Really? I said, Jack, would you mind taking me to that waterfall? Well, he took me to the waterfall and stood on the edge of it, and I flew my drone down over the waterfall. It's right on the motorway. Like, it's incredible how close it is to town. And I'm standing there pinching myself, listening to Jack Hewitt talk about one of the most iconic pictures in all of – there's never been a photo like that reproduced ever. So we both just love it as much as anybody. To share a moment like that with Jack Hewitt is just sublime, you know? It it really truly is. I mean, he is he is he he's just amazing. He he's just absolutely amazing. So so what is where do we get to see all of this stuff? Where will that be on the Facebook Live? What what type of project are you working on with that? So at the moment, I just put it on my on my personal page at the moment, Steve. Okay. Um, but the the clip of the the drone flying down over the waterfall and Jack who flipped me off, he flipped <laughs> off the drone. Right? I said, "Give me a wave, Jack," and he flipped me off. Um, that's, and that's a jack wave, really. I mean, that's, a, that's the way you wave. Um, so I'm going to put that out as a YouTube clip, but just right across my socials. And I'll, I'll if it's all right with you, I'd love to tag Wing Nation in on all this stuff because, and even the, the Ray Godsey stuff, which was just, I'm standing in a barn in Bedford, Indiana. And I said to Ray, I said, you know, Jack Hewitt called you a hillbilly. He said, I am. What's your problem? Wow. <laughs> You know, what? like, what's wrong with that? Uh, it works, yeah. for, works for me. Yeah. yeah. Fair point. So, yeah, I'm just putting it out across my socials, um, Steve. That's pretty well all that I, where it's landing. But wherever I can, I share stuff to the Knoxville page as well. Wait, did you know that the, the only, well, the time that I got close to Jack Hewitt was when I raced in Australia? Oh, really? Yeah, that he was over that winter yes. at the same time. And believe it or not, he wasn't really too fond of a woman driver. Shocking. Uh, <laughs> but yes, yes. I think it was at the Avalon Cup. Um, we were struggling. We were using used tires. We were having a rough yeah. night. And he started to help me a little bit. And I ran third. And I still have, it's one of my favorite pictures. It's in my collection of like special mementos. Jack's giving me a huge hug on the podium. Oh, wow. So after that, we became buds. And I learned that the more that he embarrassed me and teased me, that was a good thing. That meant he really liked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and remember he did it at the Classic when you when you um, got put in as promoter's choice as well for that event. Jack had the crowd doing the Aussie, 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 oi, yep. oi, oi thing with Brad Doty. And, Steve, that's the thing that – I'm getting goosebumps just talking to you guys about this stuff. That's the thing that people don't realise in America, that the deep connection that runs – Americans have been a huge fan favourite of Aussies, you know, since they started coming down to race back in the, you know, back in the day. When Steve Kinzer and Jack and, and, you know, Ron Schumann and Doug Wolfgang and Larry Burton and those guys first started coming. And you know yourself, Aaron, we love Americans coming down there. We just don't like being beaten by them. <laughs> well, actually, I got taken out by a fellow American, if you remember. Well, in the, in, Travis the Rylat. <laughs> Travis Rylat. He was lucky to get out of town that night because people wanted to have his hide if they can wear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's my still one of the highlights of my career, though. That, that night was something special. The cool. roar in the crowd. So Steve Travis put a slider on Aaron to get the last transfer. And no, I was leading. We were going to run one too. There was oh, you were too, and he took you out there. That's no right. Reason he took me out. Yeah. And in Australia, they make calls, so they actually yes. black flagged him, and so, he wouldn't get off the track. So yes, then they threw the checkered flag. Well, I technically won the race because you go back a lap, but my car yes. is now junk. So there's this whole controversy whether I should be in the A main or I shouldn't be. And the crowd started chanting my name. And I mean, Warnable packs yes. him in like Knoxville. It was yes. the most, I'll show you pictures of that night. Some, the whole wow. crowd, the whole pity area, everyone was like staring at me. It was, it was unbelievable. So I did get to start the, the Warnable Classic. 
Wow. Yeah. Yes. Crowd went nuts, Steve. Was... When they announced and Promoter's Choice, the 25th position, the place, I'm still getting goosebumps. Whew, the place went nuts, Erin, didn't it? It was, it was insane. And I hopped in a guy's car that was parked next to me. I can't remember his name, but the seat was way too big. We were stuffing pillows in next to me. And then like two laps into the feature, I'd never driven the car, never sat in it before. And the power steering line blew all over my face. And I was like, all right, I'm not sure we're running the race, but we made it, we did it. And it was a night I'll never forget. That's How good's that poster? How good's that? Yeah. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and, it, and it just goes to show when she walks into Knoxville, they start chanting and screaming and hollering. Now to this day, they do still with Erin. I mean, she, she gets them. Oh, it's crazy how things never change. Well, and it's neat because every time I see Australian fans at Knoxville, they always mention that race and how much, you know, that's sweet. Yeah. It, it was, I really enjoyed my time over there. She so, was little old Erin Crocker back then. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Not Erin Brockovich. Brockovich. Yeah, that's right. Brockovich. Well, that's Brockovich. a derivative of that. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> you had the opportunity this past week to hang out with uh, with Blake Anderson. Of course, we love Blake Anderson. Just what a great guy. Uh, with the All-Stars, Circuit of Champions, uh, Michigan and Ohio. Um, that had to be a fun weekend to get to to see some, uh, some, some different racers and some different racetracks. I've been trying to explain that to people back home, Steve, how people don't go into the track until the last minute before hot laps because they sit out at their motorhomes or they tailgate, which we in Australia, when you tailgate someone, you drive too close to them on the highway. You NASCAR draft them. So the tailgate concept, oh, no, they just sit there and drink beer. We're just going to drink some beers for hot laps. So I've been yeah. trying to explain to people that that's what happens. Um, to go to Wayne's Field, which I'd never been to, the field, as they called it. Yep. My gosh, what a cup and saucer, elbows up, joint that is. And then to go to I-96 and get to announce with Blake, um, you know, on flow was really super special for me. And hang out with Lee Jacobs and, uh, you know, people like that I've known for such a long time. And it's really special. I love that grassroots stuff. You know, I love Knoxville because it's incredible, but I also love those little rinky-dink little cornfield places as well that make this sport so unique. Wade, with your, your flight now being delayed to October, what else are you going to add? Are, are there some other races that you've highlighted or some other adventures? If you listen carefully, I'm knocking on your front door now, Aaron. I don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> Come um, on down. We don't have a ton Ray. of sprint cars down here in North Carolina. Oh, though. yeah. So um, right now I'm in Bargersville. Tomorrow I go to Boone, Iowa, to do some promo for uh, appearing at Super Nationals a uh, week after. I'm going to go to Knoxville Thursday. I-80 for the Outlaws in Nebraska. Then Friday, uh, that's Friday. Then Saturday, maybe Knoxville or Boone, probably Boone. Then Sunday, Houston. Then South Dakota, hang out there for a couple of days. Then I'm going to the Iowa-Indiana game at Kinnick to do the wave on Saturday the 4th. Of, oh, I can't wait. What an experience that's going to be. And then I go to Boone for six days. Uh, then I come back to Knoxville. Then I do the late model nationals at Knoxville. Then I go to PA for the national open because we're trying to do a PA posse bottle for moonshine there. Then I go back to California for four days and then you have to kick me out. Wow. <laughs> Bless you. In the South, you know, in the South, what we say to somebody that you're, you really don't, you really don't feel all that bad for, we say, bless your heart. Bless your well, heart. bless your heart. Bless your heart. You're going to have to struggle through all of that. Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Remember, I'm from the South, Steve. You're not. I'm from the South. Real South. Real South. The deep South. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually from Pennsylvania. So. And I'm from Massachusetts. So <laughs> and she's yeah. from Massachusetts. So there ain't one of us from the South here in, the, in North America. Anyhow. Wow. Uh, neat, neat stuff. I'm with you. I did this past Saturday night. We did the NASCAR thing up in Michigan, and I went to Butler yeah. Motor Speedway on Saturday night and watched some 410 Sprint Car drivers. None of them were at Knoxville. Um, they were all just Saturday night racers there. And I'm with you. I love, there is so much neatness out there in the grassroots world. It's unreal. Oh, just the trucks and the decals, but everyone's so, everyone's so happy. You know, that's what I love truly about American fans. And I say this with the most utmost respect, just the simple folk. They're just people that just love their racing. They love their family. They have a bit of an opinion on politics from time to time. I don't get into that with them. I just go... <laughs> Whatever you say, mate, I'm with you. I'm just here to have a beer with you and, and watch racing. Um, and that's what I truly love about your country. And I, I hope you never lose sight of that. And I don't mean you two, but I hope America never loses sight of how truly beautiful it is. I followed my friend out through the, the cornfields of Tiffin, Ohio, at the back near Lipstick and Finley and drove through 
a John Mellencamp video. Like it was just, you know what I mean? Those beautiful cornfields, the immaculate lawn, the flags on the porch. Please don't ever lose sight of how truly amazing your country is because it just, it inspires me. And inspires us to hear you say that, especially at this time. At this time, yeah, that is need, uh, need need a little that. perspective, that's for sure. Wade, it is always a pleasure to hang out and catch up with you. It's always fun to hang out in Knoxville. And uh, glad you're going to stick around for a little while. And we look forward to seeing what you come up with at all of those adventures. But thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thank you so much, both of you guys. I really appreciate your friendship and, and your support. And uh, I really hope we can catch up soon. And, and Steve, before I go, I just want to say, I get no respect. Yeah, I get no respect. He <laughs> he has me. Wait, wait. Our our line is I I remind him of Rodney Dangerfield. So mm, I get no respect. <laughs> he sounds like him exactly like him. Don't you think, Aaron? Listen to he that. Does. He, he does. Like Pull up my tie. I need to. Ugh, I get no respect. I get no respect. That's it. So awesome stuff. Thanks, Wade. Hey guys. There we go. Wade Onger joining us here on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Over the years, Drydeen has stood for uncompromised value and proven performance. Known as the hardest working brand in heavy duty lubrication, Drydeen's heritage is made in America and made to last. Drydeen products work to increase the life and enhance the efficiency of your equipment in the toughest conditions. Learn more about Drydeen's products at Drydeen.com. From grassroots racing to NASCAR, Drydeen is a proud supporter of racing everywhere. For a year-round high-quality eating experience, look no further than sage fruit, apples, pears, and cherries. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. Sage fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Want to experience racing in its purest form? Do you yearn to return to where NASCAR came from? Watch high bank full throttle super late model racing at the World 100 at Eldora Speedway on Flow Racing September 8th through the 11th. It's the crown jewel of dirt late models. This is grassroots racing at its finest. See who will win a globe by subscribing today. Go to flowracing.com slash world. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash world. Wing Nation, presented by Drydeen DRF Oil. Um... Wade Onger. Did I mention at the top of the show we're always better off when we talk to Wade? In his presence. His yes. presence. You talked, you, you mentioned the word presence. His is a message. This has nothing to do with sprint car racing. His is a message that we as citizens of the United States need to mm-hmm. listen to. We've got it pretty good. Yeah. I mean, there's moments when we're scrapping and clawing amongst ourselves because those nuts that run, the, 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 you know, up there in Washington or Raleigh <laughs> or Harrisburg or wherever right. you're at. Um, we let those nuts just put us to self, so we're against each other. When you listen to when you listen to Wade, it's like, man, we have got it really, really good. So true. So true. And I just I love his uh, zest for life, for lack yeah. of a better term. I, just in that interview, I couldn't tell you how many times I got goosebumps talking about Jack, talking about Knoxville, talking about you know just driving through Ohio. Like he just appreciates life and makes you realize it's pretty darn good. I'm a, I'm a glasses full person. I understand that. And I love someone that just is light years fuller their glasses than I am. And that's where I've always just loved yeah. from the first time I met him. And, and I don't go back in sprint cars like, like you guys do. I mean, I probably, probably met him in, like he said, 2015. He started announcing and I was probably somewhere around there yeah. when I first met him. And so I don't go back with a long history like he's talking about I when know. you guys don't want to. That was what, gosh, what year was yeah. that? 2004? Yeah. Four, yeah. You're running a sprint yeah. car, Oof. 12 years old. Running a sprint car, yeah, 12 yeah. years old. Yeah, I you? wish. Yeah. Absolutely. Wish I uh, good stuff. Hey, let's get into our up- upcoming schedule real quick. TJ Slideways, of course, if you want all of these, he has the calendar on his website. It's just phenomenal. Um, the fastest four days in motorsports was supposed to be five. Yeah. But with uh, what's going on at Placer Hill, um, starts tonight. Merced, Ocean Speedway Friday night, Stockton Dirt Track in Petaluma, the King of the West NARC Series. Speaking of four... Flow Racing All-Star Circuit of Champions. Posse fans, they're headed your way. Grandview tonight, the Jack Gun Memorial at Williams Grove, Lincoln, Baps Motor Speedway, World of Outlaws. They have Friday and Sunday racing, I-80 Speedway in Nebraska, Black Hills Speedway in South Dakota on Sunday night. Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. We're going to see what's going on with those guys and gals. Wakini Speedway in Wakini, Kansas on Friday, and El Paso County Raceway in Calhoun, Colorado on Sunday. 
Frontier Region has three races up in Montana. Sooner Region is in Kansas and Oklahoma, so a lot of racing action there. And you just passed up the opportunity to say. Oh, no, Popa? that's right. Exactly. Sunday night, the Sooner Region is at Creek County Speedway in Sapopa, Oklahoma. Whew, yeah, check your temperature. I know, exactly. Other racing, Attica, Lernerville, River City, Tri-Cities. That's Friday. Butler, Knoxville, Mercer, Portsmouth, Sealands Grove, Wayne County. That's Saturday. Houston's. And the Dirt Oval at Route 66 has the IRA bumper-to-bumper sprints and Moa getting together. It is a big, big weekend of racing as uh, we round out the month of August. So, boy, that doesn't seem possible. No, I just saw Championship Night at Knoxville and thought, I know, man, I'll tell you what, Championship Night at Knoxville. So, there you have it. So, um, great, great fun, as always, hanging out with Wade. If you're in Pennsylvania this weekend, Wing Nation gear is available on the All-Star Circuit of Champions trailer. Or you can get it at www.wingnation.com. Follow along on social media. Make sure you tweet your seat and share what's going on with your uh, your world at your racetrack on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. We have a YouTube page where all of these interviews are housed and put together. And before we get out of here, I want to let you know that this week on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit, the television show, it's Donnie Schatz joining us. Wow. The champ. The 10-time champ. Mm-hmm. Donnie Schatz joins us. So. She's Aaron Evernham. I'm Steve Post. Thanks again to Wayne Andre for joining us, and thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Dryden and DRF Racing Oils.